in this video, we're going to talk about Ohm's Law, what it is, and we're going to use a series of animations and analogies to help us understand that mathematical relationship. We need to talk about a few pieces of vocabulary and get those straight. So Ohm's Law is a mathematical relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And this cartoon, I think, is a good job of kind of illustrating what that is about. You see, voltage is essentially the push, current is the flow what, that is trying to get through the, the wire, and resistance is measured in ohms, that's why it's um, got an ohm on his hat, and that's the resistance to flow. So that's why he's got a rope there, he's trying to resist the flow of the current through the circuit. Okay, so voltage, we abbreviate with a capital V, makes sense, right, V and V, we're going to think of it as a push or a potential energy. And we're going to measure it in volts, which is also a V. So this um, is gonna be easy to remember because there's a lot of Vs involved, okay? There are certain circuits that have not much potential energy, like batteries. And there are other circuits that have a lot more potential energy um, because they have a high voltage. You can think of voltage kind of like a dam holding back water. The dam itself is not dangerous, right? But it's got a potential to be dangerous, but only if it breaks and lot, lets out a lot of flow at once. And that's the same thing with voltage. A high voltage by itself is not dangerous, but what is dangerous is that it can potentially cause a lot of current to flow through something. And it's the current that can kill people. Here's current. For some reason, we use a capital I to abbreviate current. You're just going to have to memorize that, okay? So current is the flow of electric charge and we measure it in amps or coulombs per second. We often abbreviate amperes with amps. In fact, I just said it, okay? Because it's the more common expression. Here's another analogy. So the water flow is the amps or the current. The water pressure would be like voltage and the size of the pipe provides resistance. The narrower pipe, the higher the resistance. So resistance is abbreviated with a capital R. Again, makes sense. Resistance is gonna be what opposes the flow of electrical current. So these could be things like toasters and refrigerators and lights. And we measure resistance in a unit called ohms. And it's got this weird, almost horseshoe-like symbol for ohms. So um, I would say probably one of the most difficult things about Ohm's law for students is keeping track of what the, what is it that I'm measuring how do I abbreviate it? And what unit am I using? Because the letters are a little bit strange. So in a little while, I'll show you a table that's a good one to memorize that table to keep track and not make mistakes when you're doing math problems related to Ohm's Law. So resistors are things that slow the flow of electrical energy. So they're not quite conductors. They're not quite insulators, they're in between. They will allow energy to pass through, but they're going to resist it a little bit along the way. And as they resist it, they give off heat or light or movement. And that makes sense, right? I mean, that's what we're doing with um, all of our electrical devices that we put into a circuit is we're converting that electrical energy into another format. And when we do that, um, there's gonna be some resistance in the circuit and it's gonna end up slowing the flow down if it was a series circuit. So here are some examples of resistors. So resistance opposes the flow of electrical current and it's affected by a few things. The thicker the wire, the less resistance, where thin wires will have more resistance. That makes sense, right? You imagine, Cars are kind of like electrons and um, they're heading down a freeway. 
that's got a whole bunch of lanes open. Unrestricted flow, right? Very little resistance, the current can flow fast. But if you make all of those cars merge into one lane, you are now providing resistance and the current will therefore slow down. So resistance and current are gonna be opposites of each other in a series circuit. As one increases, the other will go down. Right. Longer the wire, the more resistance. Again, makes sense. It's traveling a further distance. And hot wires are going to have more resistance than cold wires. Here's a great table explaining the different quantity, the symbol we use for that quantity. This is a capital I here. Um, the unit of measurement that we use and the unit abbreviation that we use. So we can use FET to give a visual representation of these concepts. The voltage is the measurement of how much push the battery is providing. The current is actually how fast these blue electrons are flowing. And you can see I put in a little ammeter here, and that's a tool that's used to measure the amps or current flowing through a circuit. And the light bulb is providing some resistance. If I take the light bulb out of the circuit, whoa look at that current that could cause a fire okay so you don't want too high of a current because it could be dangerous so if we put more than one light bulb in we now have more resistance and you can see the current is flowing a lot less in fact half the current that we had before so as resistance increased the current decreased but the voltage stayed the same. I didn't change the battery. So here's another helpful image to help us understand the relationships in Ohm's law. As I watch what happens when I increase voltage. Okay. So first of all, they're giving us the visual representation. It's like I'm increasing the number of batteries in a circuit and you will see that it's um, not really making the I or the R change in shape much. Let's put voltage back at a reasonable amount here. Here, we'll make it. There we go. So now voltage is back at a reasonable amount. Let's see what happens as I adjust the resistance. All right, so you see that resistance and current are essentially opposites of each other. They have an inverse relationship that as resistance went up, current went down. And they also show it down here that you'll notice when I drag the resistance bar and give more ohms of resistance, they'll put in more dots here that the electrons are going to like bump into as they're passing through and it's going to slow them down. And the current is indicated by the size of this yellow or orange uh, arrow. Okay, so here I go. I'm going to drag resistance up. See all those black dots? The electrons are gonna bump into those and it's going to slow the current down. So this orange arrow got a little bit smaller. See, now there's very little resistance here and there's gonna be a high current. So I hope you now understand Ohm's law a little bit better and um, its mathematical relationships. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you would uh, like to find more videos like this, please hit subscribe. My next video is going to be about why we should care about Ohm's Law and how to use it.